how to start a website and get it found on Google. Hey, what is up guys? It is Harrison Barron, The Morning Entrepreneur. Like I just said, we are going to be covering everything that you are going to need to know to start a website and get it found on Google. Now, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Most of you guys are probably aware of that, but ultimately it is like making your website look like a fat, juicy steak to Google. But how do you actually do that? Now, there is a lot of information to cover. I'm going to be covering the basics. If I was to cover everything in SEO, this would be a very, very, very long video. I mean, hours and hours and hours. It is a very technical process. However, there are several mistakes that most people make all the time when they are starting their website. And I want to address all of those right now. One of them, which is going to be toward the end, is actually not setting it up in Google. They just build the website and just assume Google's going to find me. It's not the case. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but that's not the case most of the time. So we're going to jump into my computer. I'm going to show you guys how to fire up a website, what you're going to need to do to get it found on Google. It's actually not that hard of a process. And I'm going to show you guys some basic SEO along the way. Now, in this case, you can use a template, start with a template, go through and modify it. I'm actually going to fire up a Wix website so you guys can see it, but it's a very similar process. If you were on Webflow, if you were on maybe WordPress or GoDaddy hosting or Squarespace or whatever other builder you choose, it is very similar as far as the process and steps by steps that you need to go through. So I'm going to explain that all right now. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a domain. That is your name dot whatever you choose. I'm, I was going to say .com, but it's so common now to have a .io, .xyz, .tv. The list goes on and on. Ultimately, whatever you want. So in this case, I use harrisonbaron.com, right? Growth-generators.com, right? Those are the two domains that I own. But for you, it could be whatever you want. It could be, I don't know, growth... Uh, growthglass.io, I don't know, I'm just looking for ideas, right? The best mugs.io or the best mugs. X, y, I, I don't know, whatever you want to make it, just go pick one. It's, it's up to you. So once you have your domain, that is basically the address that everybody sees. Everybody can remember, right? Because if I told you what a domain actually was, DNS is domain name system. DNS's domain name system, you would never remember the digits that are actually behind the name. It's basically telling the internet, hey, this is located here. And that is going to be your domain. Now, typically you pay for it once every year, usually averages about $20 per year. Now, I'm not going to be going into all the pricing here, but I just want to cover the bare basics. You need to have one of these. You don't have to have it necessarily before you launch the website or before you start the website, but you need to have it before you make it live and go public with that name. So if you're not ready for a name, but you kind of have an idea of what you want to do, you can start building the website and then buy the domain later. The second thing you absolutely need to make a website go live is hosting. Now website hosting is basically like your property taxes, right? You need to pay a company to have your website there. It doesn't matter if it's on GoDaddy. It doesn't matter if it's on A2 hosting. It doesn't matter if it's on Wix, Webflow, Squarespace, whomever it may be under, you need to pay for hosting. Now hosting ranges drastically between about $3 a month up to about $35 to $40 a month, depending on what platform you're on. Now, are there exceptions where it goes much higher? Of course there are, but the vast majority of people are probably looking at about $20 to $30 per month for hosting. Now, I'm going to show you guys hosting, hosting plans. They're all about the same for the most part. They're all usually floating between that $4 a month, and I, that's on the really low end. It's usually about 10 to 12 dollars a month up to about 30 dollars a month depending on what platform and what plan you're on so that is the second thing you're going to need to do to get your website to go live now you're probably thinking harrison you could have made this video outside and i would disagree because we are about to jump into my computer which is the best part about this i love going through this stuff i know it probably sounds boring to some people but this is literally the stuff that gets me excited in the morning so we're going to jump into my computer so we are going to jump into my computer and we are going to be going through the process. Now I'm going to be covering some more technical information that you need to do when you first launch your website. And then after that, I'm going to show you guys how to submit it to Google. So that way you can start getting found immediately, not tomorrow, not 
later today, I mean right away. You need to do this the moment you publish your website. The reason why is because Google doesn't know you. They don't trust you. The faster you get this done, this is the most important part, which is going to be towards the end of this video, the faster Google is going to be able to rank you and start to get you in the SERPs, the search engine results page. So let's jump into my computer here and we are going to go through this whole process. So right off the bat, this is my Webflow account. You'll be able to see a ton of websites in here. We're constantly practicing. We're messing around, modifying, adjusting. Now I'm going to use my agency website here just because I don't want to mess around with anything else. And we are going to go in. Now in the case of using Webflow, actually let me go back one page here. You would just go in. If you choose to use Webflow, it's quite simple. You're just going to hit new project. If you're in Wix and I can't do this for every single one, you could just hit create new website. It's that simple, right? So you're going to create a new project. It's going to give you a bunch of ideas, layouts, templates, whatever you choose. Feel free to start with a template. I actually usually recommend, especially if you're starting it out for the first time, go use a template. Don't use something else. It's going to just be too confusing in the beginning. The second thing you're going to do is once you've built your website, you've swapped all that text in and out, you need to do a couple different things inside of the website. The first thing is going to be making sure your headings are correct. So in this case, I can click on this, right? This is how I'm going to edit this. After you've already edited it, you're going to be able to hit this little gear cog right here and you'd have h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 if you're on wix we're going to go over to uh my old company website barra media group just so i can show you guys here um and you'll be able to actually see exactly what you would need to do uh on here so you can see obviously i've played around with quite a bit of websites on here and we are a wix legend partner at my agency growth desk generators the website we are currently working on but let me go in here we can edit this website and you would be able to do the exact same thing no tricks no there's no nothing this is the same process on pretty much every platform every platform is going to be a little different but you have to make sure you have to do the headings because the headings are really really important it just basically tells google what it's about so if you copy all this you can hit edit text this will come up and then you're going to do your seo accessibility and you want to make sure that there's one heading per page right uh, there's more technical information behind it it has to be a certain number of characters usually between 45 and 70 characters is a safe number once you have that the rest of the headings going down just like you would write an article for college or high school is going to have supporting headings so for example in this one this is an h1 heading heading smaller this actually needs to be an h2 heading because that's part of what it's going to be super important another h1 heading and this is why i'm doing this so you guys can see this it needs to be an h2 heading now I have to go back and I'm going to have to redesign, but just so you guys can get an idea, you have one H1 heading, a couple H2s, and anything that supports an H2 is going to be an H3. Now, if it's nothing of those and it's more of an explainer type area, right, where we have these little areas down here, this is going to be what is called a paragraph text. This is basically just telling Google, hey, this is not a heading, it's just supporting what is prior to that. So that's headings. Now, like I said, I'm not going to go in depth on every single little aspect of this. This would take forever. The next area that you are going to need to go to is actually going to be in the settings part of your website. And you're going to need to fill out your title tag and meta description. You need this. If you don't do this, the problem is Google doesn't exactly know what to show people when they go on Google to search anything. So whatever it might be, whatever you think is going to fit your company, type it in here. 50 to 65, 70 characters is the sweet spot for this area. For a meta description, you want about 130 to about 170 characters. In here, this is going to be the second sweet spot. And if you ever have questions, this is going to tell you guys what it thinks or at least what they, the program has told it to tell you, right? So 55, that's right in that sweet spot. And then 155 to 300, that's really, really long. That's super rare to see, right? If we go in here, you can actually see I'm not going to add a page here. I'm actually going to go visit the pages and you can go into the SEO section and that's right where it is. Now, both of these have some basic SEO walkthrough for this whole process, but you can go through, you can see the information here. And this is going to be the second most important step of this entire thing, right? You have to do this no matter on every single page. It's not just your home page. You have to go through, you have to do this on every single page. So this is a folder, but if I went to our work, right, you'd still have to go to SEO. You'd have to go in there, right? This is an older page. It's no longer, this whole website's no longer live, but you'd see the information here. You don't want to copy and paste it either. Google doesn't particularly love that, right? You can see the hidden pages. This whole website is pretty much hidden at this point. We don't use it really. It's more of a testing ground for us, but this is where you would go and you'd have to modify the, the slug if you choose to modify the slug, 
the page title and then the meta description for all of the pages. Once again, I repeat it, all of the pages. It's so critically important that you do it for all of the pages. Now, let's just say you're done with this. Congratulations, you paid for hosting. You can go in, you can set up the domain. It's quite simple. Each, each platform you choose is gonna have its own process. Pro tip, if you are going to use Wix to build your website, just buy the domain on Wix. It's gonna make your life a million times easier as opposed to going from GoDaddy to Wix or Wix to, to Webflow or Webflow to Squarespace, whatever it may be, it's just, it. It's not possible. It's definitely possible to fix it, but you're just going to make your life so much easier if you do it the other way around. So once you have all of that, the last thing that you are going to do is you're going to go to, you're going to go in your Google search bar and you're going to go Google search console, right? You're going to type that in and it's going to be the first option. This is the most important thing. Google analytics, believe it or not, doesn't really matter. It's going to tell you what the analytics are on your website. It's not going to submit it to Google. You have to go in here and then you have to go in and set it up. So we just rebranded. So our traffic is really, really low, but you'd go to add property. You're going to type your domain in here. So in this case, I can't really type any domains because it's just going to force me to do it, but I'll do yahoo.com, right? yahoo.com. It's obviously going to say that I don't own this. You're going to copy this information here into your DNS settings. Now, if you're new here, you're probably thinking, Harrison, what on earth are you talking about? I don't quite understand any of that information that you just mentioned. Uh, it's probably giving me a hard time because I'm trying to do something without saving anything. Give it one second here. And then you will be able to go into your DNS settings. So, once it loads, because it will take a moment, you can go through here, you're going to be able to go in this case of Webflow, you're going to go to your DNS settings, which be located under your hosting section, you're going to scroll down and you'll be able to add any DNS settings. Now, right off the bat, it's going to say it's broken. In here is where you could go and you can make those modifications. If you want to add a custom domain, you would be able to add a custom domain there. If you have any 301 redirects, any other information, you would go through and add that information appropriately in here. It's a TXT record, right? It's going to tell you TXT record. You're going to be able to go in and add that same thing for Wix. I'm going to just jump over there because it's important that I show you guys this. Our own stuff. You're going to be able to go in. You're going to be able to hit those three dots, manage DNS records. And this is where your DNS records are going to be. You would just copy and paste that verification into Google and then you're done. That is the entire process. You'd hit verify. Obviously, I don't own yahoo.com, so it's not going to work. It should sit, take a few minutes. If it gives you a hard time, come back or hit verify later and come back a couple days later and check on it. But this is so critically important. This is what tells Google, hey, you have a new website. It needs to start indexing it. The last cherry on top that you need to go do, I'm actually about to show you this, but if you do not complete any of these steps, this last cherry on top does not matter. Now, Google, once you do this, will start to index your pages, which means it's going to read them all. It's going to start to figure out where you belong in the algorithm. It does take a little while. There's usually about a two to three month lag on what Google is actually doing. So before I let you guys go, this is really, really, really important that I show you guys this. You're going to go down to your site map. Now you're going to go to the website. In this case, it's going to, we're going to use growth test generators, sitemap.xml. You're going to just type in forward slash dots, uh, forward slash sitemap.xml. You're going to copy this and you're going to bring it over into the sitemap. You are going to submit that into Google and Google is going to say thanks. And that is basically a roadmap to every page inside of your website. Now, when you're first starting out, you're not going to have nearly this many pages. We have a very active blog that we are constantly adding content to, but keep this in mind. This is really, really important for you guys. This is what you need to do. This is the cherry on top. This is going to help get you guys ranked a little bit faster. And anytime you update a page, Google knows, Hey, I need to go to that specific link, right? In this case, it's growth generators.com forward slash sitemap.xml. And then from there, it knows, hey, this is the roadmap. This is the treasure map for the information I am looking for. Thank you so much. And it'll start to process your pages faster. If you don't do this, don't sweat it. You're at least by submitting it to Google, you're doing way more than most people. If you can do this, please do it. It's just going to help you in the long term. And it's just good information for you to go do. You don't have to do anything else afterwards. Give Google a couple months to start looking at your website, to start understanding what your website is all about, and it will start to rank your website. Now, 
Once you've done all this, definitely subscribe to this channel because I am going to be providing tons of information for you guys on what you guys need to do next in your website. So like having a blog, going back and fixing some possible mistake areas, speeding up your website speeds, all of this good information that is going to help Google. Once again, look at your website like it's a juicy steak and want to help it out. This is what I'm going to be teaching you guys going forward. I hope you guys found value in this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a very simple process. It can be a little confusing. I tried to do my best to explain it all. If you guys have questions, leave them down below. I really appreciate it. And I need to make better videos. So by you leaving a comment down below, it helps me tremendously make the best content possible. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys later. Oh, before you go, hit that like button. It's literally free. Maybe a subscribe button too if I, you know, if I helped you grow your business or I helped you submit it to Google. I, I hope you'd hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Other than that, bye.